Now, I don't know about you, but I love the beach. And if you're anything like me, I bet you're dreaming of an island getaway. But what if you found out that your favorite beach was gone? Change does occur constantly to our shorelines, but how? Hi everyone, my name is Autumn, and today I would like to talk to you all about something called long shore drift, as well as show you an activity that you can do from home to replicate changes to our coastlines. Now this activity comes from NASA's Earth Observatory for Kids, and the barrier islands stands and lands in motion issue. You can find that issue online at earthobservatory.nasa.gov slash eokids. It's free and available for download as a PDF, or you can print it off. Now, back to changes to our coastlines. Our coastlines do change all the time. You may or may not have noticed those changes, but up in space, satellites can see the big picture and monitor all the different changes that are occurring on our planet, including the growth and the decline of our shores. And one of the best examples for noting these changes is to take a look at barrier islands. Like these barrier islands seen here off the coast of Brazil and in the Arctic. Because these islands are situated where they are in relation to the water, they do a lot to protect the mainland and the spaces in between, allowing many animals, including seabirds, to thrive. And barrier islands do protect the mainlands from such natural forces as wind and waves, not that kind, ocean waves, and such events as hurricanes, which are natural hazards. These events can and do reshape our shores. Now take a look at this barrier island system in Chatham, Massachusetts. As you can see, many changes took place over the years and some portions of the beach have completely disappeared. Now the motion of the waves themselves do a lot to make changes to the shorelines. Waves often approach our shores at an angle and then pull back straight. And this sideways motion of the waters onto our shorelines removes sediments from one place and then deposits it onto another. This motion is called longshore drift. This illustration further details how longshore drift affects our shores. And now we're going to replicate that motion of the ocean, that longshore drift, onto a model shoreline that we're going to create right now. In addition, we're going to test what happens when we add a man-made structure to it. So for this activity, you will need the following. Some modeling clay, the air drawing type, an aluminum roasting tray, a brick to be used to support the clay as you build your shoreline, dry clay sand as well as a paper cup, school glue, and a brush that you will use to brush the glue onto the model, some popsicle sticks, a hot glue gun, and additional glue sticks as needed, and last but not least, a digital camera. This digital camera you will use to take video footage of your model in either time-lapse or slow motion. All right, I'm gonna build my shoreline in my roasting tray. I've placed a brick under my modeling clay to help support the slope of my shoreline. I'm just smushing it together and also I am going to create a little barrier island in front. So now that my air drying clay has dried for 24 hours, I am taking my hot glue gun to seal it down to my aluminum roasting pan. Um, this is so the water won't seep too much into the clay area. Now I'm taking my school glue and brushing it all over the surface. 
And next I will sprinkle sand to replicate the shore and make it a little prettier. So now that I have my model shoreline created in my tray, I'm going to add some additional sand to better fill out the beach. So I'm gonna use my dry clay sand in my paper cup. Just get some sand in there. And I'm gonna lift this so you can better see. But heavy. So I'm gonna pour sand to better fill out my beach. And you can do uh, a couple of these cups. And once you have your beach filled out, you can then add water to it. Um, the one thing I did forget to mention for the things that you will need to do this activity, but you will also need um, some sort of um, container lid. And I'm going to use this to create my uh, waves onto the shore um, using that angle um, for longshore drift. So let's go give it a try. So here is my basic shoreline, and I'm carefully filling in the tray with water. I don't want to splash it around too much so as to disrupt my shoreline, at least not yet. Um, so just until I meet the height of that shoreline, um, looks like we're ready. And I am going to take that container lid um, and place it at an angle within the tray. This is an oblique angle and start making waves. And you'll see that there's movement taking place. I did wanna show you the slow motion effect. As part of the activity, you are asked to use a digital camera to record um, what you see in either slow motion or time-lapse. And using slow motion just really lets you see how the waves hit the shore and come back from it as well as where the sand goes at the end. So let's take a look and see what happened here. As you can see, a lot of the beach here was removed and came down this way a bit. When sediments and sand are moved by the ocean, they can form what's known as a spit or a sandbar. So now I've completed my first test with a basic shoreline. And now I want to see the effects of uh, human development onto our shores and how that affects the shorelines once uh, waves hit them. Um, to do that, I'm going to take my popsicle sticks and my hot glue gun, and I will glue the popsicle sticks onto the shoreline to recreate a structure such as a jetty. Um, and then I will do the process all over again and see what happens. I added some fresh sand too before I added the water. And here is the slow motion view with the jetty added. You might even consider adding some food coloring to the water to better see the wave effect. Let's take a look. As you can see near the jetty here, there's been a bit of a buildup of the sand. Below it is a pretty defined spit. Over time, the spit could break off from the mainland to form a barrier island. Well, I hope you enjoyed that activity. And remember, you can find full instructions for it, as well as more information about barrier islands at earthobservatory.nasa.gov slash eokids. I will see you next time. Thank you so much for joining me today. Bye-bye now.